The Glorious Flight Across the Channel with Louis Blériot by Alice and Martin Provinson. It all began one morning. Monsieur Louis Blériot, his oldest daughter, Alceste, his daughter of four years, Charmaine, his third daughter, Suzette, his son, Genot, their mama, Alice, and the baby, Gabrielle, also the cat, Minou, their little dog, Arzen, and the big cockatoo, Chloe, had just had their breakfast. The year is 1901. The place is the city of Cambrai in France. It is a beautiful day. The sun is shining. Papa Blériot and all his family, except Minou the cat and Chloe the cockatoo, are going for a ride in their shiny new car. As they roll up the street, they hear far, far above in the sky a strange sound. Clackita, 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 clackita. Hark, says Papa Blériot. He does not look where he's going. Just ahead on the narrow street is the wagon of Alphonse Jouvet, full of pumpkins, also his son César, and many cabbages. Crump, goes the car, into the cart of Alphonse Jouvet. The strange sound from the air is forgotten. Papa Blériot was driving very slowly, but even so, the cart is on its side. Pumpkins all over. No one is hurt, but there are bruised cabbages and angry faces. Fists are raised. The policeman, Achille Duval, poises his pencil when... Clackita, 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 clackita. Out of the clouds, right over their heads, soars a great white airship, and a man is sitting in a basket, driving it through the air. What a wonderful sight! It is the first airship seen over the city of Cambrai. Papa Blériot invites everyone to the cafe. They toast the valiant aeronaut and each other, and César, the brave Jouvet boy, and the pumpkins. Everyone is happy. Everyone but Louis Blériot. Now he has only one wish. He says to his family, I too will build a flying machine, a great white bird. We will all work hard. We will all fly through the air like swallows. So here it is. So here is Blériot one. No one is small enough to sit in it but Minou, and she will not. It has a little motor to make the wings flap. Alas, it flaps like a chicken. Never mind. This is more like it. Here is Blériot too, a glider, big enough to hold a man. Papa has not yet learned to pilot, so Gabrielle Voisin, his good friend, will fly. A motorboat will tow it into the air as the glider has no motor. All is in readiness. Gabrielle gives the signal. Away roars the motorboat. Like a great swan, the beautiful glider rises into the air and shoots down into the river with a splash that frightens the fishes. Gabrielle Voisin is wet but not hurt. We almost flew, he says. Papa has decided to learn to fly himself. Blario III has a fine motor and propeller, but it will not take off from the water. So Papa gives it two motors and two propellers to make Blario IV. Blario IV goes in beautiful circles. Papa is learning.
Blurio 5 hops over the ground like a rabbit. Papa's getting lots of practice. But Blerio 6, it sails across a whole field before it hits a rock. Not so bad. And with Blerio 7, Papa has an aeroplane that really can fly. No matter that the inevitable happens, a slight crash, a broken rib, a black eye, to add to the list of breaks, sprains, and bruises over the past six years. Now Papa is a real flyer, and the Blerio is a real airplane. How proud Alsace, Charmaine, Suzette, Genot, Gabrielle, and Mama are. Only one thing remains to prove how good the aeroplane is, to show the world what it can do. As if to light the spark, a great prize is offered to the first man to fly across the English Channel. Twenty miles wide, black tossing waves, fog and rain, a very cold bath. A long swim. It is a dangerous prospect. Just what Papa likes. On July 25th, 1909, as the sun rises, Papa Blériot walks with his crutch a minor flying accident, nothing serious, out to the field where his plane, Blerio 11, waits. He kisses Alsace, Charmaine, Suzette, Genot, Gabriel, and Mama Blerio. Papa climbs into the cockpit. His friend, Alfred LeBlanc, spins the propeller. It is 4.35 a.m. The motor coughs, sputters, roars. Down the grassy field, Blerio 11 bumps. She picks up speed and suddenly climbs into the sky. The French coast disappears. Far below is the destroyer Escapette, waiting to pick up Papa if his motor fails, if they can find him in time. Ten minutes tick by. The waves reach up to catch the tiny plane. Now there is nothing but swirling fog. No France, no England, no waves. Papa is alone, lost. He sits motionless, not touching the steering lever, and lets the plane go where it will. Suddenly, The white cliffs of Dover flash beneath him. A wonderful moment. 36 minutes after taking off from France, Papa is over England. Papa stops his engine and makes a very bad landing. As usual. Never mind about a broken propeller. Louis Blériot is in England. He flew there in 37 minutes. What a shout goes up. Truly, it was a glorious flight. Louis Blériot, 1872 to 1936, was one of the truly great pioneers of aviation. He devoted the fortune acquired by his invention of an automobile searchlight to the development and construction of his high-performance aircraft, the Blériot 11. His flight across the English Channel demonstrated to the world that barriers of land and sea no longer existed for the airplane. <laughs>